What the fuck is sinisterism? Well, it's the idea that in the distant past, we were more psychologically whole here in the Western world before Christianity removed the shadow aspect of the psyche from the metaphorical God within, thus leaving us out of touch with half of who we are, which is reflected in the Jesus-Satan split. So, if you want a healthier you that is not wrapped up in shame, guilt, and hypocrisy, you need to make Satan or any of the other dark gods your friends. And on this channel, we can help you do just that. This video is for those who may be new to the channel. This is an introduction to sinisterism. And you may ask, what the hell is a sinisterist? Well, if you're on the left-hand path, then uh, you very well could be one. First, we'll go over some basics. The word sinister comes from the Latin word sinistra, meaning left. Historically, the left side and left-handedness were seen as negative in most cultures. For example, if a bird flew over your left shoulder, it was a bad omen. The left side was considered evil or unlucky, thus giving us the modern English word sinister. Sinisterism, though, is a little used word, but when it is, it's most likely by the religious right when sometimes referring to the secular political left. But in the realms of the esoteric, sinisterism or sinisterist refers to someone who walks the left-hand path but doesn't quite fit within a, an established paradigm. You may not identify as a Luciferian, for example, or, or appreciate the direction contemporary Satanism is going. More on that later. But, but you're still compelled by what's down the path. You have a hunger, so you take a little of this, a little of that from different disciplines, Satanic, Luciferian, hermetic, dark pagan, Hindu, and so on. You ask the big questions. You're interested in the big picture, the philosophy, the psychology, the history, and mystery that is the left-hand path. Does this sound like you? Now, there's one really good reason why I call myself a sinistrist and not, let's say, a Satanist. Here on YouTube, type in Satanism. You know what you'll get, don't you? The first thing you'll see is the Satanic Temple, a group that calls themselves Satanic but are not on the left-hand path. And being on the left-hand path is the most important facet of being a Satanist. Look, I, I, don't, I don't drink vodka because I like the way it tastes. Imagine alcohol-free vodka. There would be no reason for it. And here's the question I keep seeing. Is the Satanic Temple truly Satanic? Are they Satanists? And my answer to that is yes. They might not be Satanists as codified by LaVey, but they're still Satanic. And the reason for this is they say they, they've adopted the old 19th century Parisian Satanism that predates LaVey. You see, LaVey didn't come up with the word Satanism or, or Satanic. Just look up Parisian Satanism. Okay, so TST might be Satanic, but I know what the left-hand path is, and what they're doing has little in common with the sinister path. 
and this group has surpassed the Church of Satan as the most popular and influential satanic organization. How the fuck did that happen? The COS was way ahead of everyone else. How did they stumble and fall? One reason is they practically have ignored the online world. And it was their philosophy, COS philosophy, that introduced me to the left-hand path. Which brings us to my personal story. Now, I've, I've been dabbling in the occult since I was a teen way, way back in the mid-1970s. And at the beginning, I had the blind faith of the average occultic fundamentalist. But truth be told, I've, I've always had that doubt in the back of my mind I couldn't shake. I kept wondering, have I substituted one form of blind faith, Christianity, for another? And also, I wanted to find what really worked. I wanted to discover the real magic in the occult, not that which I wanted to be true. That right there, believing in something because you want it to be true, not because it makes sense. So uh, along with my personal psychological and philosophical maturation, there also came an awareness of my autonomy. Thus, the right-hand path New Age bullshit with its warm and fuzzy practices had no appeal to me. The idea of holding hands with people, singing songs, and dancing around in a fucking circle sounded like a fucking nightmare. Now, if it turned into an orgy, that might be a different story. Anyway, eventually in about 1979, I opened the Satanic Bible. I've never joined the Church of Satan, but I, for the longest time, considered myself a Levain Satanist. But I don't anymore. Don't get me wrong, I still have a whole lot of respect for many of those who follow the tenets laid down by LeVay. I'd say more than half the members of the sect would qualify as such. But for me, with my frustration with the two most influential satanic organizations and being an, an individual with an obsessive nature, I need more than what modern Satanism has to offer. Over the years, I've studied Druidism, not that bullshit modern Druidism, but Celtic Druidism out of history, followed by Odinist philosophy, the Greco-Roman dark gods, and even Hindu Agora, while at the same time reading the works of philosophers and psychologists whose writings corresponded with the path. Because I think that's important, the why behind the path. Why are we on it? Me, personally, I'm on, a, I'm on a search, not only into history, but also into the depths of the mind to find the foundation, that deep psychological undercurrent that transcends it all. So even though I still respect Satanism as codified by LaVey, it's not enough for me. I have a hunger that a single paradigm or, or discipline cannot satiate. I need something that's that better conveys my general interest in the sinister path. I want to delve into its arcane rituals, philosophy, archetypal psychology, into the ancient history to find the source of it all. And I brought this up before, like for instance, who, who was the first individual to step on the, the left-hand path? That deviant fucker who said, I don't want to worship that horn god etched on the cave wall. I want to be him. So I needed a name that better suits this wide open interest. This is why the title Sinistress works for me. So that's it. That's where I'm coming from. My motivation to stay on the path isn't some simplistic rebellious stance against society or mommy and daddy or even Christianity. But for far too many, that's that's their motivation. That should only be if you're still at the starting line, though. Society, your parents, the Christians, you have to let that shit go if you're going to progress down the path. 
and Christians, I don't, I don't get why people are so pissed off at them. Christians to me are like the morbidly obese. I don't care what you eat or how much, just don't try to force me to consume the crap you're consuming. I see sinisterism to be a more mature perspective to being on the path. And if you're like me, curious and have an obsessive nature, a single discipline isn't enough. And I've said it before, the idea of sinisterism is still new and if you adopt this term now, someday you can brag about being one of the first, one of the original sinisterists. All right, to, to answer this question, first we need to clarify the difference between Satanism and the left-hand path. People have this wild misconception that they are the same thing, and they're not. No, no they are not. Satanism is a vehicle upon the path. There's multiple vehicles. Mm -hmm. Luciferianism is another one, Satanism. Uh, there's left-hand path Hinduism. Uh, oh, yeah. Even a uh, left-hand path uh, Islam, so on and so forth. There's Buddhism, even. Sure. There's a left-hand path Buddh Buddhism. These, these are the different vehicles to go down this path, to mm -hmm. utilize this path. Like I said, Satanism and the left-hand path are not the same thing. To clarify what the left-hand path is, <clears throat> basically, it is... Left hand path is bending the spiritual to your will. Yes, it is. It is not following a pre established path. Letting it take you. Right, right. It's, it's, yeah, you, you are in charge of it in a sense. Yes. Okay. Now, so, uh, sinisterism. Mm hmm. That would be someone who has taken from many different elements of the path uh, and formulated their own paradigm that works for them, where they can go and search for that, that deep core. That's another aspect about sinisterism is you're searching for that deep core. You can call that a pure root on a path that is not pure. <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> Left-hand path, there's no, it is not pure. It is, it is no. dirty and it is messy and it's, you know, it is some cases violent, if you will. Oh, you know, absolutely. In a spiritual sense. Uh, but creating something or s creating something original, mm -hmm. in a sense. And what I've simply done is is giving it a a name. Yeah. And people are really liking that. Yeah, you know? people are writing to me. Yeah. There there have been a few that are really enthusiastic about it. There's been people who have commented on some of the other vid videos I did about sinisterism, mm -hmm. and it's uh, definitely connected with them. Yeah. Uh, because a lot of people they 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 don't identify necessarily what's what with what is out there right now no but it's uh you maybe gave them a, a name it gave them a name that's basically it yeah uh like we're saying people who who already people already are sinisterists and don't know they are sinisterists mm -hmm. uh, the term now when you Google the term sinisterism or sinisterist, you're going to get a book, okay, written by this guy. I, he's like a far right Christian, whatever. Uh, and he uses that as in referring to the political left. 
he's a bit of a whack job. He even says Hitler was a leftist and so on and so forth. And, you know, it, when in truth, this form of sinisterism has no connection to that, that term, sinisterism, right. whatsoever. Oh, no. No. The only thing in common is the word sinister, which comes from the Greek, or excuse me, the Latin word sinistra for left or left-handedness. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we have, we have no connection to leftist politics. Yeah, no. And I'm actually whatsoever. very surprised at uh, the number of people I've run into or read that that's what they think. Yeah, that, they think it's the same thing. Yeah, left-hand path is, means a left political... Now, the left-hand path comes from Hinduism. Okay. Okay. You have the established, the pre-established right-hand path. That's the vast majority of Hinduism. Mm -hmm. Now, the idea is that there's an energy that comes from the north. And so as you stand watching the rising of the sun, this energy comes through your body, you know, through the left side and out your right hand, if you will, the right hand side. Yeah, I'm familiar Hence, with that. Yeah. Now, if you counter that, if you bend the spiritual to your will and you turn and you face the west to the setting of the sun, let's say, into darkness, that energy flows through you and it exits the left hand, yeah. hence left hand path. All right. Now, the leftist, when it comes left-right paradigm within politics, comes from the French, French Revolution period, uh, wherein their, their great meeting hall uh the the there conservatives yeah the conservatives would sit on the right the, the progressives would sit on the left hence <laughs> right left there is zero connection between the two yeah. philosophies there is none the left hand path the left hand path should be greater than politics oh hell yeah like i've stated before in yeah, recent yeah. videos too i mean politics is the residue of philosophy you consume philosophy and you shit out politics. Yeah. All right. The left hand path is greater than that. No, it certainly is. Okay. Identifying with sinisterism does not mean you are anti satanic. Mm -hmm. uh, I am innately sin satanic. Uh, as codified by LaVey. I mean, he said you are born a Satanist. Satanists aren't made. You're just born. It's just innate. It's a trait. Right. It's like oh, yeah. being an introvert or an extrovert or whatever. Yeah. You are a... Just part of your makeup. Satanist. Mm -hmm. All right. If that's so, then, okay, Satanism isn't quite enough. No. For me, at least. Granted, a whole lot of members of the sect of Horn God are Satanists. Yeah. And they are, of course, welcome. And, oh, absolutely. And some, and we met some wonderful people within the Satanic community. Mm -hmm. One of our best buddies, uh, Jake, for instance. He's yeah. like old-time Satanist. <laughs> right. Know? So, of course, there's nothing wrong with being a Satanist. I'll just, pray, I'll just put it that way. Yeah. No, of course not. But I need just, just the way my head works. You know me. Mm -hmm. My yes. My, oh no, I don't. Yeah, my my bizarre obsessive nature. I gotta <laughs> dig deeper. I gotta go deeper. I yeah. gotta learn more and more and more. You know, it's it's just the way I am. Mm -hmm. You know, once I get into something, I I I I become obsessed. And with the left hand path, I've come. I've more than become obsessed. It yeah. it has been something very beneficial for me. Oh, it has. Uh, you know, yeah, it is both it's of us. definitely helped who I am. Mm -hmm. and, and now, and getting back to Satanism. Come on. Uh, you know, oh, I know. You know <laughs> what's I, happened to it? Uh, what yeah. has happened to Satanism? Yeah. It's it's a mess right now in yeah. my eyes. Oh, yeah, it really is. It's a big uh, mess. You, 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 it's, it's so watered down that now you even have a right hand path version. Mm -hmm. uh, there are so many different groups. There, you know, there's too much uh, hail Satan's, and it's like, come on. Oh, no kidding. Uh, just, you know, I don't, I don't want to be on a, yeah. you know, I'm added to Facebook group sites. And all you and, see is hail Satan. And all you see is hail, just people back and forth. Hail Satan, brother. Hail yeah. Satan. It's like, <laughs> no. Where's the philosophy? Let's have a discussion. Yeah. Let's, let's go deeper. But no, a lot of these people are unable to. 
unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, I spent 30 years basically being a lone Satanist. It was 1979, roughly, when mm -hmm. I read the Satanic Bible. Yeah. And for about 30 years, uh, the only other people who, who identified as Satanists were most likely people that I woke up to Satanism. Right, right. You know, I, I gave them a copy of the Satanic Bible and told them, read this, and then ask them, do you see a reflection mm -hmm. in this book? They connected with him, and, those, and there were a few, you for one, and, yeah. a, and a few others that were already, you know, established Satanists. Yeah. But most, you, you know, like I said, then finally I got online, all right? And I thought, I thought cool, I'm going to get to meet, you know, others that, that think like me, and we can network, and we can yeah, discuss. Yeah, that doesn't happen, you know, mm, not really, no. or not often, I oh, should say. Oh, no, no, know. no. We, like I said earlier, we met some wonderful people, oh, lifelong yeah. friends. Yep. You know, but we met a whole lot of pricks. Yeah. <laughs> a whole lot of nutcases, a whole lot of angry, petty people who just use Satanism as, you know, a, a mask they can put on, you mm -hmm. know, and underneath it, they're, they're, they're sad, pathetic mm -hmm. pricks. Yeah. Petty individuals. Yeah. You know, Satan means adversary. So I'm going to be adversarial. So yeah. fuck you. You're just being an asshole because you got picked on in high school and now you're taking yeah. it out <laughs> on others. So. Haven't left the starting gate. No. Sinisterism will always be. It just it just is. Yeah. It, ever since that first rebellious individual on a on a on a spiritual path, you know, who knows how many many thousands of years ago that sure. took place. I mean that's that was the birth of it. Yeah. It's just now it has a name. Instead of calling yourself I'm an eclectic left hand pather who you know no you just you are a sinisterist mm -hmm. it's just that simple sinisterist just means left handed left uh, it pertains to the greater ideas of the path mm -hmm. you know than just simple one specific paradigm yeah be it sat Satanism or Luciferianism or Hindu or Hindu left hand path or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, it is, it encompasses, it finds truth in a lot of these different sure, oh yeah, disciplines, yeah, and you try to e extract, like I said earlier, that core. You try to find that core purity. Mm -hmm. Why sinisterism? The word sinister comes from the Latin word sinistra, meaning left. Thus, sinisterism or sinisterist refers to someone who walks the left-hand path but doesn't quite fit into an established paradigm or is frustrated with them. Let's face it, the state of modern Satanism is pathetic. Now. At my core, I am a Satanist. I see it as a trait, a characteristic. It's who I am. I was born that way. It's part of my DNA. And I can't change my DNA. But as a practice, I've moved on from Satanism. Why have I moved on? Well, to begin with, there's a form of Satanism that's now a hollow echo of what it once was. Since the death of its founder, it has steadily and sadly slipped down into obscurity, and now it has little relevance. Why have I moved on? There's another form of Satanism, right-hand path Satanism, that pushes collectivism, compassion, and a specific political agenda. They've watered down what Satanism is. They've turned a 44 Magnum into a squirt gun. Why have I moved on? There's a form of online Satanism that's nothing more than a tantrum. Angry atheists a reaction to Christianity. 
Left-hand path philosophy is ignored because their stance is based on rebellion only, no philosophy. They're angry at society and, of course, mommy and daddy. Why have I moved on? There's a form of Satanism that's also angry at mommy and daddy and society, but they are not atheistic. They bow down to Satan, call him father, master, and God. They are fundamentalists, so everyone else who doesn't believe as they do are frauds, infidels. But why sinisterism, you may ask? Because I'm too fucking old to be an angry adolescent, and my black heart lacks the compassion to be a right-hand path Satanist. I can't be a satanic fundamentalist either because I understand what mythology and archetypes are. Truth be told, I'm an individual with an obsessive nature. I'm selfish, I want it all, and a single discipline isn't enough. I'm interested in the philosophy, the psychology, the history and mystery that is the left-hand path. I take a little this or that from different schools of thought besides just Satanism, like Hermeticism, for example, or dark paganism, Hinduism, and so on. In a way, sinisterism is the mixed martial arts of the left-hand path. It takes the best of what these disciplines have to offer to create something new, something deadly. I was asked recently why I now refer to myself as a sinisterist. Truth is, I think I've been one for years, many years. I just didn't have a word for it. Now, I've been dabbling in the occult for over 40 years. And at the beginning, I had the blind faith of the average occultic fundamentalist. But truth be told, I, I couldn't ignore my doubts. I wanted to find what really worked. I wanted to discover the real magic in the occult, not that which I wanted to be true. So, along with my personal psychological and philosophical maturation, there also came an awareness of my autonomy. Thus, the right-hand path, New Age bullshit, with, with its warm and fuzzy practices, had no appeal to me. The idea of singing songs and dancing around in a circle with a bunch of delusional hippies sounded like a fucking nightmare. And then I opened that black book. And like most modern dark esotericists, Satanism was the first vehicle I utilized on the path. Now, being an individual with an obsessive nature, when I get into something, whatever it is, devouring all aspects of that topic tends to be the end result. Simply scratching the surface is never enough. So, I studied Druidism, the root of much of European esoteric thought, followed by Asatru, the dark gods of the Greco-Roman traditions, and even Eastern philosophies such as Hinduism, while at the same time reading the works of the philosophers and psychologists whose writings corresponded with the left-hand path. I was going on a search, not only into history, but also into the depths of the mind to find the foundation, that deep philosophical, psychological undercurrent that transcends it all. So, even though I'm still satanic, as codified by LaVey, Satanism was not enough. Besides, there was a growing frustration in my gut for contemporary Satanism. It seemed to lose that spark. Too many organizations, too many poorly written books, too much anger and pettiness and so much watering down of the philosophy that now there's even a right path version. Because I had a hunger that a single paradigm or discipline could not satiate, something different was in order. 
something that better portrayed my general interest in the sinister path and all it had to offer. Something that better suited my interest in natural inclinations. This is why the title of Sinisterist works for me. If you think about it, Sinisterism is nothing new. It has to have been an aspect of the occultic path, going back, way back into time, to that first rebel, that shaman who looked at that etching of a horn god on that cave wall, raised his left hand and said, He is me. I am my own god. Some people will never understand what the left-hand path is. And that's a good thing, because if everyone got it, it would lose its essence. It's magic, if you will. Someone who's a sheep especially will never get it, for the sheep can't see beyond the herd, because that's their whole world. There's no world outside the herd. It's like an ant in an ant colony. There's no life outside the colony, and an ant alone has no purpose, and it will die. Now, for some of you, you on the left-hand path, what I just stated is obvious. And you're probably wondering, why are you wasting our time with this, Thomas Roy? Well, it's because of a comment left on my video, The Foundation of Sinisterism. And it goes as follows. The left-hand path will never be anything more than a tiny fringe element with little power. Collectivism, submitting to a higher power, sacrificing yourself for a greater good, etc. Just win at life. Individualistic left-hand path weirdos have little influence, don't have many children, aren't war heroes or leaders of nations, religions, and civilizations, and are pretty much irrelevant to history. So again, I say, you are delusional. Sinisterism is a good way to destroy cultures and weaken your enemies, but that's about it. Hmm. Now, let's start with this person's first point. And you know what? They're right. The left-hand path will never be any more than a fringe element. And that's the point. It must always stay on the fringes. If it becomes accepted by the masses, becomes easily digested by the herd, then it's no longer the left-hand path. Besides, there are plenty of people, most people I know, I wouldn't recommend the path to. These are people I care about. They couldn't handle it and it wouldn't be healthy for them. It wouldn't be healthy for their psyches. And the next sentence, collectivism, submitting to a higher power, sacrificing yourself for a greater good. All these notions I find despicable. The 20th century was filled with people who were collectivistic, submitted to a higher power, and sacrificed for the greater good. And hundreds of millions died because of it. So fuck that notion. The next sentence. Individualistic left empath weirdos have little influence. Really? And the comment about heroes and leaders of nations, it, it can't be quantified because the left-hand path is a private pursuit that one is not always open about. And the rest of what the person wrote need not be responded to. Here's the basic point about sinisterism and the left-hand path in general. 
it's not about the greater good or the will of the collective. It's all about personal empowerment at a deep psychological level. It's about you going down into the darkness, into that place in your psyche that only you can go. No one else can join you. The collective can't join you in there. It's a place where the herd doesn't matter. And that's the point. Within this community of dark adepts, sinisterism is paradoxically both unique and ubiquitous because I believe many of those on the path practice it without the realization that they are doing so. Now, why do I think this? It's because it's, it's extremely difficult to have an independent spirit and at the same time abide by the rules of an established paradigm. And we tend to have an obsessive nature, so a single discipline will not suffice. We ask too many questions because we don't want to believe we want to know, know the answers to the mysteries that dwell in the shadows. And we are not reactionary. We're not on this path because we're mad at mommy, daddy, society, or Christianity. To work your way down this path, one must have a mature perspective on what's going on in the arcane depths of our own psyches. Because of our innate obsessive nature, we don't simply scratch the surface. We dig deeply as we learn the rituals and study the symbols, the philosophy, the archetypal psychology, and the history of the left-hand path. And by, and by doing so, I've learned that sinisterists have existed in one form or another since the beginning of time, since the first primordial human being decided to stop bowing down to some animal god or sun deity and instead said, I am that deity because in my world my greatness is equal to the god so I bow down to none. That innate spirit has always existed. So over the centuries, sinisters have been those that have taken a battle axe to Christian morality and other fear-based dogmas. And their studies have taken them from Hermeticism to Hinduism and still further back into the ancient Indo-European core philosophy of the eternal natural law and back further still to that first horn god to find the source. Into the depths of history and the depths of the mind to find the foundation, the deep psychological undercurrent that transcends it all and in doing so have come to acknowledge that the human animal is a beast a carnal lustful creature that is one with the primal and when we are truly one with the primal primal in history primal in the psyche then we can obtain truth what do I mean by truth I'm talking about your truth, that personal truth that only you can uncover in the deep recesses of the dark absolute of your mind. Thus making sinisterism the supreme philosophy of the self. It values selfishness because if you aren't worth a damn to yourself first and foremost, you can't be worth a damn to anyone else. To change the world, you must first change yourself. It's the weakest, most pitiful human beings who shout the loudest, who insist that the world must change for them instead of changing the world inside themselves. 
a sinistrous never blames others for their woes in life and never looks to others to make their lives better. For it is a philosophy of intellect and strength over faith and subservience. A sinistrous is a wolf instead of a sheep, a wild boar instead of a domesticated pig, a fighter instead of a victim. It's a philosophy of faith, but it's faith in ourselves instead of in politicians, preachers, or some self-centered, emotionally stunted God. We take charge. Willingness to dive into life head first, but always willing to take responsibility for our actions. A sinistrous does not believe in karma, but instead has a love of fate, if you will, a love for whatever life has in store, because it, if it doesn't kill us, we will emerge a better, more whole individual. We strive to become what Nietzsche called the higher man or woman, the human, that has forsaken slave morality and has risen to their highest self. A sinistress is also an unsafe being, for we are willing to speak of the darker aspects of the human condition. We are the deviant, heretical voices in the ever-expanding PC culture. We are the monsters at the windows of night, watching those enslaved by fear. Look around you. Are you aware of the herd? Do you see them? Pick one out. Does that being have an awareness? Is it even conscious of consciousness itself? While most run away, we pay attention and learn from all aspects of existence. The successes and the failures, the good, the bad. We learn from the intelligent and the stupid. We take it all in. And the status quo? They're too afraid. And what do they fear the most? They fear themselves. They're afraid of the shadow self, that which lurks inside. And to relinquish that fear, they look outside themselves. They pray in the subservient posture of a slave to beg their master in the sky to save them. Save them from themselves. But we were different. We want to get to know that demon, that demon we share a beating heart with. And that's why we perform the rituals. So we can commune with that demon to embrace that Jungian shadow, that half of what we are that has been shunned by a society based upon a dictatorial religious philosophy, a philosophy of death, while we preach life. Question. So, could there in theory be a theistic form of sinisterism? The answer to that question is yes and no. This is because in truth, sinisterism transcends the real, not real debate. As I've stated many times in the past, this philosophy goes deeper than that theist, atheist argument because that discourse survives here on the surface in this reality where we all function whatever this is thus making it a shallow debate to me it's like like two hungry people argue arguing over whether something tastes good or not when the truly important thing is whether that food has nutritional value. Now, I do understand why some would ask this question, because here in the Western world, we're all too wrapped up in this debate. 
where in the east, they can see beyond it. When I come across the hardcore atheist or the hardcore theist, I, I see individuals that are not interested in the deeper meaning of a given philosophy. To them, what's most important is being right. Thus, it's no longer a philosophical debate, but more of a political one. And what's politics but the residue of philosophy? But to both sides, I would ask them this most basic question. Define real to me. Anyone? Now, there seems to be certain laws that no matter how hard we try, we can't break a natural flow, if you will. And it's at the foundation of the left-hand path that we attempt to reverse that flow turn our backs on the rising of the sun and face the darkness. Now, I've gotten shit from both sides calling me a fence straddler. The atheist thinks I'm delving in nonsense, wasting my time, while on the other side I've heard this statement from theists. Prove to me there isn't a real Satan. The problem with that statement is, you can't prove a negative. Here's an example. Prove to me that I don't have a pet invisible dragon. You can't. But there have been many who lean toward the theistic side who do understand this philosophy of sinisterism. They understand the idea that there is a force, a deep psychological current, something greater than themselves, yet part of who they are. They just choose to personify it, give it a face, give it a part of the carnal, thus making it more accessible. In conclusion, it's important to understand that this philosophy of sinisterism is not agnostic. There is no maybe, kind of, I don't know. Look at it as the third alternative, one that goes beyond atheism or theism, one that sees the other two as superficial and lacking depth. I hope that answers your question. Until next time.